If you have any experience of a traditional Indian wedding, you'll know that the actual ceremony is preceded by a number of rituals and gatherings that can easily span a week. Two of my favourites are the Sangeet and Mendi events, which should take place separately according to the book, but many brides choose to combine them. The Sangeet is an evening of music and dance giving the families an opportunity to get to know each other, while the Mendi traditionally refers to the henna designs applied to the bride and other members of the bridal party. Whether you choose to hold these happy gatherings separately or together, sweet and savoury snacks are absolutely essential. And this is what Vani Pariachi has in mind for today. The Mendi evening is an event that typically kicks off the festivities of an Indian wedding. And what is a celebration without good food? So we've asked Chef Vani Padiachi to create a very special menu for the occasion. Vani, what do you have planned today? Michelle, so today I've got a little bit of a nibbly bit, a little bit of snacky food. So you know, it's all about family and coming together and kids playing, uncles are playing cards, moms are talking about flowers and food and, and actually the dresses and what designs to use. So we're not going to sit down to an elaborate meal. So I'm going to create a, a bit of snack food. We're going to put it out on the table and everyone can come and nibble along. Well, it all sounds amazing. Where are we starting? So to start off, we're making a dry patty. We're going to grate the potatoes on the core side. You'd notice that they look a bit dryish and I've baked them over salt. So the salt has absorbed all that liquid from the potatoes. Potatoes are grated and I'm going to add some corn flour for this and the reason for the corn flour is to hold it together. And the next spice is some chaat masala and in it goes. Chaat masala seems to be your signature spice. Why? There's something about it. It reminds me of childhood spices, that aroma. I mean, can you smell that already? Food cooking at home. You know, I used to do my homework in the kitchen while mum cooked. Now this is well mixed and now we have a beautiful, lovely mixture. So I'm just going to set this aside and make the filling next. So to make our filling, we need some chana dal. This is the dried chana dal and you soak it overnight for 24 hours, so it's nice and soft. Our pan's heating up, add a little bit of oil, and to that I'm going to add one chilli, a bit of ginger. So I'm just going to give this a few chops. You don't want it too spicy, because I'm also going to be adding some dry spice to this. And I'm going to saute off the chilli and the ginger first. Ooh, can you smell that? And the next ingredient I'm going to add is a little bit of turmeric. Just a tiny pinch, Kashmiri spice, a little bit of ground cumin, and some salt. Just a little. And next is I'm going to add the soaked dal. And you just want to cook it just a little so all that flavour of the spices incorporates. And that's ready, so I'm going to set this aside and we are ready to make our alu tiki. So it's almost like the size of a golf ball. If you take your dough and you make a little center and then you're filling. And just squish that in with your fingers. And now I'm gonna form the little tiki. Just keep your thumb on it so that the filling doesn't pop out. So there we have our first tiki. The oil feels about the right temperature ready for frying, but let's just check. I have some extra dough. Just a little pinch and perfect. You can see that bubbles forming right up. And always, when you put something into the deep fat fryer, always put it away from you. And I'm going to give this a bit of a flip over. It will take about three or four minutes to cook. You want it to a beautiful golden brown color. This smells really good and it's looking good too. I'm gonna take them out and put them on paper towel ready to be served. So I'm going to place the tiki onto the spoon that's already set because all it is is just one mouthful. I'm going to drizzle with a bit of sweet tamarind chutney and I've got some coriander chutney as well. And to finish garnishing a beautiful sprig of fresh coriander and not to forget that all-important spice chaat masala. And there we have it. Every party needs a good signature drink. What are you making? We're going to be making a mango lassi. The ingredients are mango puree, some yogurt, 
lovely cardamom, just for that beautiful spiciness. A nice pinch of sugar, some milk, and I'm going to blend that all together. So this is the consistency we want, sir. Let's palate up a glass. Look at that. That looks incredible. Can I try? I think so, quality control. Oh, absolutely. Mm, that is really refreshing. Good. So, shall we start on our next dish? Yes, what are you serving next? So we're going to be making papri chaat. We're going to need some flour, some beautiful carom seeds or celery seeds, just a drop of oil, and then some water. So I'm going to be making a firm dough. So we will add some water as we go. You don't want it too firm, but also it's going to be enough to roll. And that looks about ready. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of flour on the board and in goes the dough. And just knead a little, just to bring it all together. And I'm going to just small little discs and into the flour. So we're just rolling out little flat discs, almost to the size of a espresso cup. If you have a cookie cutter, that's even better. So my oil looks about ready. Always remember, away from you. These will take about two to three more minutes to fry to a beautiful golden brown. So let's take them out and let's get plating. So let's break that up a bit. A nice little coriander chutney, tamarind sauce, and you'll see that I'm plating them in a little dollop on each side because the whole thing is that you're going to get to mix it up all by yourself. A little bit of coriander and the all famous chaat masala. And there we have it, papri chaat. Bonnie, what else do you have in store for us? For the last dish of our Mendy and Sangeet evening, we are going to be doing chicken tikka wrap. So let's marinate. So we need some chicken. I've got some deboned chicken thigh, some hung yogurt. And you're probably wondering, what is this little black candy? This is actually black salt. We grind them to a beautiful powder and the flavor, oh, it's different. It's, it's earthy, it's, it's yummy. A good pinch of some black salt and some Kashmiri red chili, a tiny pinch of turmeric, and some normal salt, just a little bit. Give that a good stir. Now this I'm going to cook in the tandoor oven, and if you do not have a tandoor oven, you could cook it in braai or even under the grill in the kitchen. Okay, so this is ready to be skewered. Okay, so. And this is ready. I'm going to go take this to the tandoor oven. And look at that beautiful roasted chicken. So I'm going to take it off the skewer and just pop it back into the bowl. I have already made my little wraps. First thing I'm going to do is put some red onion, a bit of tomato concasse, Cucumber. I'm just going to tear up this chicken. It's nice and warm. And a little pinch of chaat masala, some black salt, and I'm going to put a tiny dribble of yogurt. And to finish off this dish, I'm going to put on some fresh mint. Just a few petals, just to bring out that clean flavor in it. And there we have it, chicken tikka wrap. Oh, it looks beautiful. So, would you like to try? Absolutely. Let's do this. Mm. And? Mmm, so good. Good. From the refreshing mango lassi to the tasty chicken tikka wrap and all the other dishes, this has been a masterclass in how to prepare for a Mendy evening. Vani, thank you so much. Only a pleasure. See you soon.
These tasty nibbles will add to the delight of the Sangeet and Mendi events, whetting your appetite for the wedding day feast.